Hello everyone, welcome to my video with Glenn Cortino from Harcourts in Beverly Hills. For those of you that want to see a motivation or a man in motion, this guy is one of those very unique people. Uh, we had a great, uh, great time speaking for about half an hour this morning, covering a few business points and some ethoses and some mantras that he abides by. A great family man with a huge commitment to grow that business over there. And it's uh, been doing extremely well over a very, very short period of time. He is no doubt a networking master or guru, as I like to say. This is a real worthwhile interview for you guys who are aspiring to be real estate principals to learn a couple of tricks from uh, um, a guy that really knows what he's do doing and has had a very long and distinguished career. So uh, please watch, enjoy. Why Harcourts? Uh, Harcourts, well, I was actually going to come over here and do RT Edgar and open my own little business. But um, in, a, in America, you've got to be here two years before you can actually open a shop. Right. Harcourts had a shop here already in uh, Beverly Hills, which was only, I think it had three people in it. Yep. And um, I knew Mike, there goes a the sign. I knew Mike, Mike Green very well. I did all their training. I've done Harcourts training for nearly 25 years. Okay, good. Yep. Uh, and then I think Mike Green and that sort of got wind that I was in town and took me out for coffee and next thing I know, I was Harcourts. Fantastic. And, uh, there was a couple of people already here doing it. Alex and Diana were already doing it. So I partnered with them and another couple, Crystal and Ron, and then the five of us started this little venture and now we've got 52, 53 agents in a oh, year. Okay, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, that's grown fast. So how, just in, the, in relation to the culture, uh, yep. in the transition, say for your family, and how people have amalgamated with your Aussie accent, those sorts of things. How, I know it sounds like a silly question, but. Oh, no, 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 I was always concerned about it too, but actually, no, it's, um, it's actually an advantage, I'm popular. I wasn't popular in Melbourne. I'm popular here, so uh, people love the accent, and yeah, uh, yeah it's really good. What is that noisy? Is that too noisy in the background? Can you hear no. that? That's just okay. a noise. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. Um, mate, we'd love to have that here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it's really uh, it's really easy. It's uh, the mindset uh, in Melbourne. I just brought the same attitude here, and you know, Melbourne is a long way ahead. In fact, Australia is probably a long way ahead in real estate terms of client service and professionalism because. Here, real estate's great, but there's a lot of full-timers, a lot of part-timers, whereas yes. in Melbourne, it's it's a full profession. I mean, I'm probably the only agent, I think I'm the only agent in Beverly Hills at the moment in a suit and tie with a badge on. No one else does that. So, you know, it's rare. You know, the uh, just and you may be aware of this, Glenn, but the there has been a real uh, dissection in at the um, REIV in relation to education and what's happening now. Yeah. The agent's reps course now has been increased fourfold. Oh, right. Okay. Interesting. 32 segments now. Wow. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Which is actually because it lifts the standard, but so it'll make it hopefully even better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So tell me, so on that, so as far as franchising goes, where, where do you think the long-term, the long-term life of that is? Because there's a real, um, there's a bit of a belief here in Melbourne that it's sort of going to go back more boutique -y. with a lot of yeah, I, Look, I don't know. I think, I don't know about Melbourne. I know here every, it's franchises. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of them are privately owned. A lot of the real estate agencies are owned by massive corporations. So, you know, some of our competitors got, you know, in Beverly Hills, they've got 500 salespeople. It's a big, you know, thousand salespeople. It's not unusual at some of the big companies and they're all privately owned. So, uh, and some of them are, are, you know, listed on the stock exchange. So they're big, yeah. big companies. But look, we're, Harcourt's a franchise. So we've got a thousand offices around the world. We've got 40 in California. Uh, they're the only company doing auctions here in Beverly Hills and California. So that's a real strong thing for us. And that's been received really well, the auctions, from what I can tell. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's really good. And uh, as far as, now you've got Brooke, your daughter, is working with you? Yeah, she is, yep. And any other family members? Uh, no, all the boys are here, but they're all music. I wanted them to go yeah. into real estate, but all the boys have gone into music, so as you know, no, with your God, kids. That's, so. that's good. I know I know that uh, JB and uh, your kids stay in touch, so that's good. And thanks for having them over anyway for dinner when they're over. Oh yeah, no worries. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't fill them up. They kept on eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a bit like that here. So look, right. the, franchise, the franchise model is not as popular here as it is in Australia, but there's certainly a lot of growth in it, and uh, people like to be part of something large. So if yeah. you're part of a big group, it's going to work well. I sort of feel secure with that, don't they? Yeah. 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 All right. So, in, so you still have your interest in RT Edgar over here? I still do a lot. I sold out of my shares with most of the boys down there, but it was my brother-in-laws that were down there. 
Um, um, but I still do, I think I've got four auctions running at the moment. So I still do a lot of business in Melbourne. I'm still doing four, four sales a month, three or four auctions running at any one time because I've had a client base of 30 plus years. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I've put two houses on the market this week in queue. So, you know, they're running okay. Fantastic. And people are fine with you being OS? Yeah, they don't mind. I mean, I've got uh, a guy called Brett who runs my campaigns. He's been with me for a decade. He, he, he's Indian like me. He looks like a skinny version of me. So, yeah. you know, he runs it really well, keeps me in the loop and, uh, you know, it, it's fine. Yeah, okay, good. And tell me, so in relation to how your, your business structure is now, so yeah. because the, the employee setup is different than here, isn't it? Uh, it's very different because the agents get paid a higher commission split. They get 74% payout. And how's the number calculated? What's that worked on? Uh, well, it's worked on what they bring in and the average fee is 6%. So when you list and sell a house, if you do both ends of the transaction, you're on six, uh, but you fund advertising, marketing, branding, everything yourself. So the, the businesses here don't have to have any, we don't have any costs. Besides our rent, that's it. We don't have a single cost. Right, okay. All right. So then, then growth is basically brought on by how many people you can bring on and how you manage them. The more amount of people you have, that's the game. As an owner, you've got to have, you know, if you have 100 sales people, you've got a good business. Yeah. How, how much training do you do on a daily basis with your staff? Oh, yeah, a lot. We have a Zoom meeting every week. Um, we used to have physical. We have two training sessions a week online. And then I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching with the team. All right, okay. And do you do much outside hardcores? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've done three or four companies here, yeah. Yeah, and yeah all good? Yeah, all great. Oh, yeah, no problems. I don't mind you're a competitor? No, no, they don't care. No, they don't care. And, okay. you know, I can go and tell everyone what to do and they don't listen anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I know that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. um, the As far as the, um, uh, the American COVID situation goes, what effect has that had on you guys over there? Look, originally in the first couple of weeks, it was everything stopped dead, but it's fine now because we're, we, we ne they never stopped showing. So we can still do inspections with buyers one-on-one, -on -one, 10 minutes apart. No problems. People can list, you know. It, Mel, um, LA's funny because everything's business as usual except everything's outdoors and with masks on. We yeah. haven't locked down or shut down for anything and uh, it's really active. It's strong. Just that when you do open homes, it's by appointment every 10 minutes and everyone has to wear a mask. Other than that, it's business. Everyone's out. It's funny because what's happened is, is there seems to be a, a reverse effect on the initial lockdown. The real yeah. market went a bit quiet for the first fortnight to three weeks but it's actually been permeating. Some of the people I've been working with, their businesses are trading at the same numbers they were six months ago, eight months yeah, ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's really a mindset. If you think that it's a COVID issue, it's not. It's really your mindset. And exactly in COVID, right. when, we were, when, we, when we were stuck at home, we just double up. I mean, I'm working from home now, but, you know, we're branded and we're just working away. Yeah, okay. And so as far as moving forward in where you are now, you've got one office there? Yeah, we've got one. We're about to launch a second office in Brentwood, which is right. the next suburb yeah. over. And... Uh, yeah, we're going to grow pretty quickly, I'd say. Is that with the same partners? Yeah, same partners, yeah. So how did that... Can I ask you how that came about? What was your criteria when you decided... Because partnerships are one of those things. I've had three partners over the years, and one I've just finished with after 27 years. Um, and it's sort of... It's, it's like a... Paul Hogan reckons that he was married for 26 years, and people say it failed. He goes, well, no. He goes, for 25 of them, it was great. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. Tell well, us. I was in partnership with Nick, Paul, Annabelle, Ted, James in Melbourne for a couple of decades and no problems, easy. Yeah. And uh, the, the partners here, I've known them for a little while. I got to know them before we went into business together. And, you know, they've got their mind, same mindset, same focus there. We're all hands on, we list them sell. Yeah. Um, okay. And it works pretty well. Because the role of the, the directors changed a lot, hasn't it? The last yeah. few years, you have to be more front and centre and hand. And more, more hands on in relation to the listing and selling of the business. Well, the thing is here that you get 74% of your listing. So you make more money out of selling a house than you do running a business, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, when you, when you commission 6% and your average sale price is $5 million, yeah. why would you not just go and sell a house? You pick up, I mean, we've got a house that we sold just recently. The commission was $200,000. You know, it's really good money. Yeah, yeah. Because I know I've got a, a mate of mine, Mark Kentwell from PRD up in Newcastle. Yeah. And he he's very much front and centre. They did forty three sales last month. Yeah, right. You know, and a lot of them were his. Yeah, so, yeah, because he's completely changed the way that he runs that business now. He's running yeah. it from the front door, basically. Best way to do it. I yeah, mean, once yeah. the you know, generally when the owners stop running the business and stop getting on the front door, the business to go backwards pretty quickly. 
okay. And what about, tell me about your back structure. What have you got behind you? Got, do you have in-house accountants, bookkeepers? Yeah, I've got, um, I've got Brooke. Yep. And Brooke and Brooke. And that's it. <laughs> she does everything. Well done. Okay, that's, mate, that's, that's a really good economy of scale. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah. We don't need anything else. You learned that after a everything, while. Everything's, um, everything, because all the sales guys have to do most of their own stuff. So everything's handled by lawyers and escrow agents here. So we coordinate everything else. Yeah, okay. Because we, I'm not, in, our, in our development business, we've got an office up the road. And the, um, it's one of those things where I went from having like 50 staff to having three, and it's the best thing yeah. I've ever done. Like, yeah, it's, you're it's right. A, yeah. It's a walk in the park. Yeah, like it's just so much easier. Yeah. Okay. So, let so everyone in the business, everyone in the business has to list themselves. That's the best way the business should run. Yeah. Okay. And what, as far as the the LA market, generally speaking, I know this this the transition of auctions into that market. How have you sold that yeah. to the public? How do you educate them to that? Well, to the public itself, people don't really ask that here. I mean, they just want to know that you know your stuff. So I thought, well, the first thing to do is to obviously make sure I look like I know my stuff, even if I don't. So I just thought I'd just wear a suit and tie and a badge and that makes you look like you're credentialed. Uh, set up a good pre-listing kit that arrives in 30 minutes, many appointment, Melbourne-based type mindset. And then have a great social media platform. And that's enough to credential you to get the job. And once you get the listing, it's all over from there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, I used to think that way too. That's good. I don't so, really know about the market. I don't really know much about land per square foot, what the values of property are, and you know what? I don't really need to know. I don't want to know. It'll work. You know what? I know if I list a property and nobody comes to first open, the price is wrong. <laughs> yes. Mate, that's like 101. I haven't, yeah. I haven't heard a principal speak like this for a really long time, can I tell you? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, a really long time. Because a lot of people would say to me, oh, what, what do you think this is worth? Blah. And I still do that now. Like we've just bought some stuff on the other side of town up in Gisborne, Macedon area. Yeah. And I really, it just looked like a good buy to me and I could amortise it out and do what I wanted with it. So I did a reverse FISO and then I paid what they wanted. It didn't, yeah. the, the math just sort of worked. I didn't know yeah, yeah, right. value or not, you know? Yeah. So, all right. So as far as new stock goes and development and all that over in your area, tell me, is it, how's it progressing? Yeah, it's fine. No problems. There's plenty of developments around. I mean, there's tons and tons of developers here in town. You just got to get to know them. I know where they all go on Friday. I just go. I just turn up at the same place. They all go to the same rest. There's about four restaurants that all the developers go to, yep. and uh, they go there every Friday. And I just park my branded car out the front and go into my suit and tie and shake hands and make friends. Okay. Well, I, I, I normally will walk probably five or six streets around Beverly Hills, the main strips, go and see all the shopkeepers, the restaurateurs, all the owners, just get out and shake hands. Most of the, most developers own restaurants. That's what it is. Most people that own restaurants have developments. So okay. I, made sure I know every owner at every restaurant, every wine bar, walk around. You know, I mean, most owners in restaurants here I've met, I meet once a week and say hello. Just yeah, get out and, right. you know. I so love to hear you say, you speak like that because in, I'm dealing with a guy over on the other side of town up in Sunbury, Adrian, a very good real estate agent. And we've really worked on making sure that the retail sector knows who he is. Yeah, and the amount of business that's grown from that is huge. And there again, yeah. I don't hear that from a lot of people speak like that, especially real estate principals. They're not thinking like marketers; they're thinking like agents. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got my Harcourt's branded car. Uh, I'm always dressed in blue. I've always got the sign on, and I just walk the streets and park my car outside all the right places. So we've got 25. We started with zero a year ago. We've got 25 Harcourt's branded cars in Beverly Hills now. Wow, 25 blue cars. All the agents have got their cars, they're blue, they're stamped. There's 52 agents in Beverly Hills from our company walking around with blue scarves on and blue ties and, you know, we're getting known. Yeah, it, make, it makes a difference. All right, so then, yeah. as far, what, what's, if, if I, I always preach a one, three and five year goal plan and I, and I preach, you know, business goals, financial goals and personal goals. If I said to you, what, what's your three year plan for your business? Well, it's built on, there's a couple of things, fees and, and staff. So in our, we, our first year in business, we did a million dollars in fees, which is pretty good from, from zero. Yep. Um, and I'd like to get to three in year two and maybe six in year three. It's kind of the numbers. We'd like to have a second office uh, this year. We'd like to be at 100 salespeople by, you know, six, next six months, we should be at 100 salespeople. Uh, that's the goal. And then for me personally, I want to, you know, close half a dozen deals that are 10 million upwards, you know. We've just listed a house for 11 million. I mean, you know, you list a house for $11 million exclusively and you sell it, the commission's half, uh, 
commissioned six hundred thousand dollars. You yeah. don't need many of those deals to go through to change things for you fast. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so really, just building the brand recognition, um, and you know, making sure that we're really well known. And we are already. I mean, we're the you know we're the talk of the town in Beverly Hills at the moment with our branding. And there's not another agent in town that's branded, not one. Yeah, but we we well, I've been following you quite a bit. So, and I must admit, yeah. your marketing looks really good. Yeah. It's just an even even walk walk down at Malibu in the water when the, the waves came and hit you. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. They, they work, those things. Yeah. yeah. People sort of, yeah. it's like a real tactile type thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, we, I mean, we've just been out spoiling everyone I know. Like yesterday I delivered, or the day before I did a deal, closed a sale. I think 10 places got a big chocolate cake like this delivered to them. The escrow, the lawyer, the other lawyer, the buyer, the seller, the seller's friend, the two agents that did the deal on the other side and both their admin staff all had a massive chocolate cake with congratulations of Glenn Cortino delivered uh, the same day, every one of them. Yeah. And that keeps people talking and creates a bushfire about your name. But you used to do that here though, didn't you? I still do it there. I still do it in Melbourne. Yeah, I had yeah. cakes and flowers going out yesterday and today is in Melbourne as well. It's the same. Yeah, okay. All right. And as far as, so with that, just in relation to the communication in your partnership group, Right, because that's where partnerships are generally fragment. You yeah. Know, if you've been with uh, Nick and Paul and that down here for that long, and I know you guys yeah. have been around for ages. Yeah. The, how do how do you work on the the unification of communication? You know, keeping it with all. How do you do that? We um well, we've got a couple of things. I mean, we communicate probably three or four times a week on a group text. We uh, have a meeting every week, which is important, and we try and get drunk every couple of weeks at a bar. You know, that's enough. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. But you know, glass of wine every couple of weeks is, is enough to keep you tight. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Yeah. But there's always. So, in, is there? A, are you the like the guy in the group? Yeah, probably. But I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the town. But I'm I'm the one that pulls everyone together. Yeah. You're but my guy. partner Alex and Laurent and are the, the two guys that actually really understand. I mean, the real estate here is a minefield, and you got to understand it. Like, if I want to list your house for sale. So the yep. paperwork is probably 40 pages and 30 signatures. So it's messy. In Australia, it was, you know, get the yellow out, press hard and get out, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a minefield here and selling is a minefield. So I can get the house listed and I can get it sold. I just can't do the paperwork in between. And I don't want to learn. It's too hard. I have to get someone else to do that for me. How old are you now, Glenn? Oh, man, I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm 55. Oh, well, I'm 58. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Okay. And I know yeah. and I just can't be bothered with a lot of the logistics. So what? So as far as the, um, no, I've still got five young children at home. So we're busy at home. So I've still got five kids here. The boys are in music, which is just blowing up everywhere at the moment. I mean, we are, you know, we're in studios three days a week. We're in, you know, on a on a set tomorrow in a studio till two o'clock in the morning. So I have to do my real estate from recording studios while all the guys are smoking marijuana. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. The, the boys have got some really good tunes too. I must admit. So, yeah. So on that, so that initial move to LA was predicated on what, what your boys were doing. Is that totally, right? yeah. I mean I, I, I mean, I left a really strong business behind um, to follow a 12 year old's dream. So really, I didn't really want to come to be honest. Right. So it was the boys wanting to be rock stars and wanted to take on the world and wanted to be world famous. They didn't come here to be famous in one town. They want to be world famous. And uh, so they came here, they're about to release albums and videos and all sorts yeah, of things. Congratulations. It's just great. I must admit with, a lot of the things that I do now and have done recently, I do for both of the boys. Yeah. Yeah. So the desire thing and, and following your path. So what's, how old is your youngest? Uh, Jules is 14. Mason's 15. They're the singer and rapper. Yeah. Uh, Billy is uh, 17. He writes music with the boys, plays the piano. Jack is 20 and he does uh, songwriting and manages them. And then Brooke, who's 24, uh, she manages, she's a partner in the business. She runs the boys, she runs me, she runs the world, basically. And Fantastic. That's good having an old... Drag awesome. her over here. Yeah. All right. Was, did you, what did you say? You have to drag her over? I have to drag... Well, you know, well, I couldn't leave her behind, but we weren't going without her, so she had to come. All right. Okay. All right. And she's cool with that now? Yeah, no, she's good. Yeah, she's settled in. We're keeping her organised and settled in and... Uh, she didn't have time for anything else but to run the family, so uh, yeah. it's good. Well, you're a fortunate man because you've designed it that way. Yeah, yeah. Everyone works in the business. I mean, you know, we had packages to go out to customers today and all the kids were doing the packages for, and in the packages, all the music and all the Harcourt's real estate. So if any of Mason and Jules' 13 and 15-year-old screaming girls want some CDs, they also get a Harcourt's brochure, always. <laughs> Excellent. So tell me, just 
in, in not keeping you too long, I like to keep these videos reasonably short. But That's okay. In, in the next, say, in the next five years or so, is it you'll get to you'll get to sixty. You obviously reasonably fit. You look good. So yeah. What, what's going to happen? Will you will you keep doing what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah. I'll do. I'll I'll, I'll keep doing real estate till I'm dead. I won't. There's no. There's no until I can't. You know, touch wood. If I'm at ninety, I'd still do it because I like it. I've got a client base that I've had here now and in in Melbourne that's I've had for thirty five years and. You know, there are clients that have had flowers for their wedding anniversary for 30 years in a row. Yeah. yeah. I'm never, I'm never going to stop that. No matter how famous the boys become and how wealthy they become, I'm still going to do my real estate. I just released a book, you know, that didn't you? Did you see that? No, I didn't know that. I, 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 oh, no, I read that yesterday, actually. Yeah, right. Yeah, I read, I read, no, but I, I read that you'd written a book. I didn't know till then. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty easy read. It's, uh, it's just gone out through America and uh, London and... Australia and it's on Amazon. So um, it's about fatherhood, real estate, being a good person. You know, okay. yeah, I'm in the process of, I've got, a, I've got a, a writer that I've been writing with. I'm halfway through and I've actually, I've got to the point where I'm struggling now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause of my background and my, my adoption and all that sort of stuff. What happened is I, I got writing this book and then I've, I've hit a stumbling block. So I've just given it a break for a month. Oh, when you hit a stumbling block, you just write the end. <laughs> That's good <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll have to get a copy of that book. That's on Amazon, is it? Yeah, you can just buy it on Amazon. Yeah, just jump yeah, online. Yeah, but, um, right. now, yeah, so, so, I mean, you know, that's what I do. I spend my whole time, you, you know, one of your questions was how long do you spend networking? Well, all yeah. day. All day, every day, out, suit and tie, shaking hands, meeting people and looking for listing. Yeah. So, uh, in the, so let me ask you this. In relation to the, the, the dollar side of things, without giving too much away, okay. how many of your own listings do you sell? My own? All. No, I sell mine. So what you list is what you sell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I partner with an agent. So I've got three or four deals that are with 50 50 with another agent. Yeah. But uh, only because they want to do the opens. I don't really want to do opens on the weekend. I feel like I've done my fair share of open homes. So yeah. <laughs> I will list it and give it to a sales guy to handle it and I'll just split it with them. Yeah. But even when you split it, I mean, I own the business. So, you know, you're still getting 40% anyway, which yeah. is more than I've ever got in Melbourne of a 6% kick. Yeah. There's yeah. enough. The you know, plenty in it. It's not like, you know, in Melbourne, we'd scratch around for one and a half. Ooh. Lost you there for a second. Yeah, just cut out. Yeah. And one sec. In Melbourne, we'd scratch out, scratch around for one and a half percent, and then the office would pay us. You know, we'd pay ourselves thirty percent if we're thirty-five percent, right? Yeah. yeah. Of one and a half. Yeah. Here it's six percent, and you're getting seventy-four. So you can split it and share it around a bit. Yeah, the numbers are different, and that's also provides growth at scale. Then. Yeah, and there's no. I mean, there's nobody. Nobody fee cuts here. It's just. It's just not. Nobody does it. That's your fee. That's what you're paying. Yeah. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a strong industry for that. And even houses that, you know, you know, you get to 10 and 15, 20 million dollars, still 5%, yeah. 5% is the range. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is, and you, you, you'll probably be aware of this, but when COVID started, I had two real estate business restructures that I was working on. Yeah. They didn't have six weeks worth of cash flow in the business. Yeah, right, yeah. I just, but then I found that that was actually, that, that wasn't odd. It became the, the norm. A lot of them that I was dealing with, didn't have that amount of cash flow. And that's all this fee cutting is just, is driven that business. Yeah, it kills it. And also you got to remember a real estate agency over here, besides our rent, we don't have any other costs, any yeah. fixed costs. So the model is good. Will that model ever work over here? The difference is you have to be able to work with other agents. It's different okay. because when I list a property here, all the other agents competitors work with me because we offer them 3%. Right. Yeah. Very, it's unusual because I do that in Melbourne. No, so here, yeah, all the agents are on the same side. They all work together because it's six percent. Offer them three, or if you do both ends of the transaction, you get six. So it's a different model here, and you know, that, that, it's a it'd be a big turnaround in Australia to do that. All right. So and now, in in relation to um, your opinion of what's happening in the market here, with your, your, your still your business interests here, what do you, what what what's your prognosis? For the next sort of six to twelve months, oh, I think I think you're about to have another run. I think you're about to have another property boom because it feels really strong in Melbourne. And uh, you know, if you it's just a matter of pricing the property correctly, but if you price it right, market it right, uh, you know, there are still properties selling in seven days. There's fifty people. We had a listing in at fifty three Warburton Road, Canterbury, which I've just put on the market, and one in eight Foley Street, Q, both yeah. with RT, uh, both with RT Edgar, and we've had 30, 40 phone calls on them. You know, they they're blowing up, and people are out now. They can get to look at houses, so. We were selling properties unseen in Melbourne, which is unusual. Yes, yeah, that's quite a bit of that happening. Yeah, okay. I tend to agree with you. I think we're going to be through. 
go through a bit of a, an uplift and surge in demand because it's pent up. Um, I suppose the, the only the only um, waterfall might be depending on what happens with job keeper, job maker, job seeker. Yeah, but it makes no difference because if you lose your job, you've got to sell your house. If you get a job, you've got to sell your house. If you're living in quarantine with your wife and you can't stand or she can't stand you, you've got to sell your house. So, you know, people still go broke, people still pass away, you know, just normal life. It's just real estate's safe, always yeah. safe. It's a, if it's you're an agent, then you can go. As an agent, you have to go the distance. You have to go through four or five disaster years. Good year, good year, good year, disaster. And most agents bail on the disaster year, but that's the sign there's another one coming. Yeah, the I've been through, this is my fourth recession since I've been yeah. in business. Um, yeah. One thing that I've noticed is that uh, the opportunities always abound and you, I yeah. find that there's actually more available, better people around for me to look at as far as hiring. Even from a, from a sales point of view or a consultancy point of view, the doors are open here in relation to the amount of good people I've seen available that want hiring. Yeah, I like rece- I prefer to work in a recession anytime because it's not easy, it's harder, but it cleans out a lot of agents and you just have to double your work ethic. And then, because if I lose a house in a good market, the other agent's going to sell it. Even if they're terrible, they're going to sell it. In a bad market, I always get it back. Yeah. So I yeah, prefer yeah. that market. Yeah, that's what, when I first started with Barry Plant, that's what Barry used to say to me. He goes, if you yeah. make money in a shit market, the rest is going to be okay for you. Yeah, easy. That's yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, I started, I started in the recession in the 90s when interest rates were 18%. So, to me, I didn't know any better. So yeah. a boom market was unheard of. So I think that's much better and it makes you a better agent. Yeah, okay. But, you right. know, you, it, comes, it just comes down to customer service. I mean, the guy I met 38 years ago is still my close client and still gets stuff for his birthday. His kids get stuff for his birthday. It's been 37 years, I've never missed his birthday. Yeah, and I've probably yeah. got 3,000 people like that in Melbourne and 1,000 people like that here. And that builds a bulletproof business. Yeah, that's good. So from a work ethic point of view, just enlighten me to just your daily routine. What time do you get up in the morning, just on average? Uh, about 6.30, out the door at about 7, 7.15, go for a walk with my wife, have a long, you know, walk together. She talks, I listen. Um, we, have a, we have a coffee together. We turn on my e- emails from overnight. Then I, by about 8.30, I put a post on my social media, which is Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, WeChat, yeah. um, uh, TikTok. Right. So seven social media sites before nine o'clock, a positive Harcourt's me post about a sale or something. Seven days a week, 365 days a year without fail, never miss. So by nine o'clock, my face is in front of maybe 250,000 people yeah, before cool. my face is out of bed. And then 9.30, get dressed, showered, go to a coffee shop outside, not to the office. I haven't been to the office in months. Um, go to a cafe, sit outside, have a cup of coffee, get my phone, get on the phone, ring everyone I need to ring till my phone's dead, go home. Okay. All right. And so, and then, so in between that, you, you manage your kids. Yep. All right. You've got your daughter that manages you. Yep. All right. You've got your wife that probably manages everybody else. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So what about so as far as the, the next few years for you are going to be pretty flat out, aren't they? We're getting busier and busier. I mean, I, you know, my phone blows up at night. The boys' messages blow up at night. We're busy, busy. We're a working family. We're all in it together. We're all in music and real estate. So, but you know, I go into a music studio with twelve people. The boys do a song. I'm there. I walk out with twelve names and addresses. Yeah. The next morning, twelve people get like when I left the studio on Friday. Yeah. I got twelve names, addresses, kids' names. All their kids got a gift in the morning. All twelve people in that studio had donuts delivered the next day from your real estate agent. And the Cortino family. I created yeah. fan base. That's just that's just a completely different mindset. That mindset yeah. is I'm here, I'm available, I'm gonna be in your face. Yeah, all day. Yeah, very good. Congratulations, mate. That's fantastic. Yeah, um, so as you can see, I've eaten most of the donuts myself, but I do <laughs> something about you know, I try to get in front of and spoil five people a day with something. Yeah, okay. And that's, uh, cool. that's how you build a business where you don't have to prospect. I like prospecting, but you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I always, I always used to say, I'm a networker, but I can't prospect for shit. Yeah, well, I make, I prospect reverse. I want to, I'm make an attraction business. Take the photo. Make it an attraction business. People come to me um, because I spoil them. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's that. Mate, what a great mentality and philosophy that is. I, um, mate, on that, on that score, the only, I suppose the only other thing in, in rounding this up is, what do you do for you? Is there one thing that you do that floats your boat, or is the motivation of all the things you've got going? 
is the thing that floats your boat? Oh, look, to me, I'm a Carlton fanatic. So I sit up at two o'clock in the morning with a can of Coke and I watch the Blues get smashed every time. But I, that's my passion in the football. That's about as much as I get. And then I'm in the studio with the boys doing music. Saturday, we go and, sometimes we go and sit on the beach for eight hours with a deck chair. And I'll take, you know, if we're going to the beach for the day, I'll take two phone batteries so that I can, I mean, kids swim. I don't like swimming much. So I just plug my phone in and message all my clients on the beach. I, I can't think of a better way to work. Yeah, okay. Last time we were at Santa Monica, I was sitting on the beach with a deck chair and a couple of phones and two batteries and I think I got it 50, 60 messages out and might have listed a house out of it and there's no better way to do your business. Do you, have you just, have you noticed any change in your behaviour since you've been to the US, things that you weren't doing at home that you do now? No, I just had to go, I had to recognise where I was, that I was an old shoulder with 38 years experience who knows nothing. So once you real once you recognise that you don't know what you're doing, yeah. then I know that I have to go out and kiss babies and shake hands and go back to old fashioned, you know, yeah. hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. But my yeah. basics are the same. My basics are up early, seven days a week. You know, make the phone calls. I still make thirty calls a day, every day. If I don't make thirty today, it's sixty tomorrow. Just the stuff that I was taught when I was young, and I've never deviated for that. If I meet a client, I walk out with their wife and kids' names and birthdays. You know, just little things and. Yeah, that's that's great. That gee, that's so lost here now. That type of yeah. attitude is very very lost, and that's yeah. obviously why you do so well. You know, I've never I, I've been. I think in the last month, last three weeks, we've been to four restaurants. Before I leave the restaurant, there's a an email and a thank you letter written back to the waiter every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never been in a restaurant in Beverly Hills without writing a thank you letter back. That's great. That's great. I must admit, my philosophy, yeah, my philosophy with that's the same. The kids always say to me they. When they were little, I used to get bored because I used to talk to all the staff and get all the yeah. Because if they were serving me, I was being treated to something special. So I wanted to make sure I recognised them properly. So that, yeah. that that skill, I think that's inherently genetic in you, though. Yeah. A lot of people can't. You try and teach them that, Glenn, and they don't wear, they don't wear it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a different thing because, you know, if you're a waiter in a restaurant, you get a letter from a customer saying, great service. Your boss finds out about it. You get a promotion. I get the best table in the house every time I go there. And uh, I reckon I've done hundreds of them since I've been here. Hundreds and hundreds of thank you letters. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's great advice. So what I'm going to do is, in, in wrapping this up, your, your list of accolades are that long, mate. I think, <laughs> what, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm, these will be posted on the front of the video. Hey, whatever you like, mate. I'm not fast. So, yeah, whatever you like. On the front of the video. I want to thank you very much for spending some time with me. Yeah, um, no problem. I just feel the energy is fantastic. Because I don't, <laughs> it's funny, cause it, even doing the consultancy stuff in the background, I don't get a lot of this. You know, yep. there's not many people that really sort of nail it and rock. And I'm probably lucky now that you're the third guy I've spoken to in about three months that is on, is on that service plane, you know, yeah. just out there making a commitment. And to be honest, that normally in our vicinity of age group, I don't find many people that have got the buzz or the enthusiasm to get rocking now. And yeah, yeah. Lost that, you know? yeah, yeah. So, uh, mate, I feel blessed that you spoke to me. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll stay in touch. Good luck to your family. God bless you. Yeah, thanks, mate. We'll be in touch. I appreciate you. Yeah, go Blues. Yeah, go Blues. That's it. You come, Sporter. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I would have given you. I would have spoken for another five hours with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're sort of we're sort of getting there. All right, we're on the way. We're on the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been yeah. good watching them this year. I've got to say. Yeah, it's good. They've been good. They're only like two goals off every game, really. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think game plan looks pretty good. We've got some <laughs> yeah. really young talent. Yeah, yeah. Right. The spread. You know, the trade week's coming up now, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, so, all right, good luck. Thank yeah, you, mate. Thanks. Nice. Appreciate it. Good on Bye. you.